What's going on, Ape Nation? It is Saturday, September 25th, 2021. I just finished my final weekend shift of the quarter. Thank God. I uh, don't have to do this again till well, Christmas, between Christmas and New Year's of this year. But for the next three months, it's going to be a lot lighter. I won't be having 10-hour uh, days or working Saturdays. So I am going to dedicate tomorrow morning, besides going to get a haircut tomorrow, I'm going to dedicate tomorrow morning to getting all the comments from the last couple of videos, get everything read, answer everyone, any questions that there are. Uh, that's what tomorrow is going to be dedicated to. Also, tomorrow night, I'm going to be making a video because I lost my appeal with YouTube. The YouTube gods have decided that all the clips I pulled from YouTube on my video on the mandates uh, were misinformation, even though they all came from YouTube, just from mainstream media. So, yeah, I cut them and edited them, and there was some commentary, but... All of the information was from other YouTube channels. But because of that, the opportunity has arisen that I'm going to, on Sunday nights, upload one video and maybe you guys can help me with this. We can talk about it in the comments. One, one subject matter from the week, whether it be in news or we could talk about politics, we could talk about AMC, we can talk about the market, we can talk about commodities, whatever you want to talk about. But one thing on Sunday night that we can all talk about when there is no line and we don't have to worry about, um, you know, the market actually being active. And we'll try to pick out maybe a story that has some misinformation in it or something that you guys want to do a little research on or you want me to look into. And I have a subject I already picked out for tomorrow night and it's a beauty. So uh, look forward to that tomorrow night. And please, tomorrow night, comment on this video. I really want to know what people honestly think is going on with what the mainstream media reported and what your own two eyes tell you. And see what we get. See what we get. And if the feedback is good on the video, I'll keep doing them every Sunday night. Maybe we'll call it Sunday Night Raw or we'll come up with some clever name for it. And every Sunday night, I'm going to put out a video that has to do with something that needs to be clarified let's let's say that so the last couple of videos i did we talked about the sec report and gensler and his past and i want to get into charlie's video from i believe thursday night because i think he said something that kind of went over my head at first and then i thought about it and i was like man i'm like i'm like i've thought about this before but i don't i didn't know if it was really a consensus out there, but it seems like after Vanda had this report come out, it is a consensus. And I think that makes the case for AMC being extremely bullish and that the short squeeze is just a matter of time. It's just a matter of when. I think there is no way possible that the shorts can get themselves out of this mess without closing their positions and having to buy back the shares at whatever price we demand. It's just going to be a matter of how long can we hold to see those numbers that we really want to see. And will emotion get involved when it comes to selling during the short squeeze? But before I get any further with that, cue the speeder. <laughs> You just said that on camera. This going viral. Guys, thank you so much for crushing it and getting me to 1,000 subscribers. If I haven't earned your subscription yet, this is the way. Okay, so back in February, this article is from February 2nd, 2021. Uh, Business insider Vanda Research creates Vanda Track. It says Vanda's research new retail investor tracker nailed silver and AMC as likely targets for Reddit driven short squeeze. These are the four stocks it says could be the next GameStop. And they went into in this article talking about some of the meme stocks that we were going to come into and AMC being one of them. And last night in Charlie's video, or I believe it was from the night before, Charlie from ZipTrader talked about AMC. Um, I know he covers a, a wide variety of stocks, but he does occasionally give AMC updates on his videos. And the dude totally seems like he knows exactly what he's talking about. Uh, he's very good at doing technical analysis and at calling out 
uh, possible catalyst that can drive up stocks in pre-market. Um, I haven't done any of his courses or Discord or anything like that, but just watching some of his videos from time to time, he seems like he's very knowledgeable about the market and I uh, suggest if you haven't seen his videos, check him out definitely. I would recommend him, um, not for advice, but as far as learning about the stock market, he's an excellent, excellent teacher, I think. This video basically, in the video, basically Charlie is talking about the sentiment and the price action and certain levels of price and where apes and institutional investors are ready to jump back in at a moment's notice when they see the price dip below uh, certain numbers. And I'm going to let Charlie explain it to you and then I'm going to kind of elaborate on it and uh, agree with him and make some comments. So I'll let Charlie take it away. Roll the film. Okay, moving on, Ooga Booga AMC. Now, I was surprised that AMC didn't trade stronger today, given the extremely green day that we had in the rest of the market. But you look at short interest at all-time highs with cost of borrows near lows, and it seems that the bears are holding an edge right now, at least when looking at their influence on the public price. Again, with estimated short interest at all-time highs, what does that mean? Well, it means that there's more incentive than ever for AMC stock to go down. But here's where it gets really, really interesting. So CNBC put out this data from Vanda Research, which was the same research firm that put out that chart from a couple weeks ago saying that retail had their first net outflow day of AMC since February, which many called as an attempt to spread FUD, but hey, the point is, this isn't a group that wants to favor retail in any way, shape, or form. I think that they're probably fairly indifferent to retail. But look at what their data says and how they've reacted to it. They just published a data set on what retail investors were buying on the September dip. They put AMC as the third top retail purchase with 90 million in retail purchases during the dip this buying pressure from retail during a period of time where we've gotten one of the worst dips that we've had in weeks showed that once again the ooga booga enthusiasm is alive and well and is buying amc at each dip vander research admitted it they said in our last note we argued that retail investors appetite to buy the dip was waning that statement wasn't completely accurate i think they meant to say wasn't accurate at all but anyways this is what they were telling their clients they go on to say they are still more than willing to buy the dip, talking about retail, but are demanding larger discounts to deploy their idle cash. Let me read this last part again because this is where it gets very, very important and this is where it gets to the big point of this video. Are demanding larger discounts to deploy their idle cash. What does that mean and how is this bullish? Well, this means that there's a ton of AMC Ooga Booga cash from retail on the sidelines that we don't see right now in the stock, but we will see at lower and lower prices if this comment from Vandal Research is correct, which I believe they're right on the money here. It's sort of like an effect. Every single time this goes to a new low, there's this invisible cavalry that's behind the scenes that all of a sudden gets incentivized to buy it up because they're like, okay, at this deal, at this price, this makes sense to buy. The logical difference. Not everybody who bought this late in the game are sitting on green positions right now, but the vast majority of people who either bought early, bought the dip, or even averaged up into some different trends or bought the rally in January are still green. Put another way, if you are green on AMC, or if you were recently green on AMC and you were green most of the year, then you're much more likely to have a good emotion when it comes to AMC outside of the whole movement situation. And you're like, okay, well now it's dipped. I want to buy more because I want to be even more green in the future. The reason that's important is because when you get down to Vanda's research saying, hey, there's a lot of buyers that are showing up at lower and lower levels. They may not be showing up now at higher levels, but they seem to be increasingly showing up and you get to lower and lower price points. The reason that's important to understand is like, hey, well, if you have enthusiasm, they're going to keep showing up. And if they keep showing up, the enthusiasm is going to keep staying. And eventually shorts do have to cover. If what this data says is true, it looks like there's a silent, massive group of apes with a war chest ready to buy in when you get to lower price levels. It All right, guys, so I'm going to pause it here. And the point of this video that I found I was in so much agreement with, and I had been thinking about this for a while, but I wanted to get some type of input from someone else besides just my own brain but i think i mentioned it in the video a while back and i said you know guys think about it at what point is the price going to go down enough now remember on friday we closed over 40 dollars short interest is at an all-time high how is it that they cannot possibly drive the price down with short interest so high how is it they can't get the price down below $40 to not have to pay out all those calls that finished in the money on Friday? 
And if you think about it, and I, I did mention this, but there's no way I could go back into the videos and try and find it. But I talked about how at what price point is it going to get too low where there will be so much buying pressure in and FOMO and people jumping in, institutional buyers and day traders and scalpers and everybody else to where we have a repeat of June 3rd and with no waning or no uh, shares that can drop out of the sky uh, hanging over our heads, at what price does it become too high and the shorts are going to have to close? If we can duplicate that run again and all it's going to take, I mean, think about if this stock goes back down to $20. With the potential that is known for AMC, who isn't going to buy AMC? How is it possible the hedge funds are ever going to get this price back down to where it was before June? I think they're done. I don't think there's any way out of this for them. There is still the inevitable. There is no way around it. You can keep kicking the crap out of it, but at some point, you have to start closing those positions. I think that between what Charlie said and what Vanda's research shows, the case has to be made that AMC is still extremely bullish. I think Friday proved that more than anything, that you have short interest at an all-time high, and they can't even close the price below $40, where in the past that wouldn't have been an issue. You know, is there a consensus here? Do you guys feel the same way that there just is no price that they can bring it down to that wouldn't create some type of buying momentum to push it right back up again. And if that's all this is, is a tug of war between us and the hedge funds, well, like Charlie said, uh, most of us are in the green still because we bought back in March or April or May or early June, whenever we, d whenever we bought. And if for whatever reason you bought after the June 3rd, run up and you aren't in the green right now have conviction in the play have conviction in the community you know rely on others that maybe can help keep you going especially if you're struggling right now i know a lot of people out there are struggling i know a lot of people are struggling to hold on to their shares and not give them up they have bills coming due believe me i'm in the same boat um we all need to lean on each other and realize the magnitude of this play because this stock could be a game changer for so many people help so many families go to good charities there's just a lot that can be done with this money and i just think this movement is so important for the future of the stock market and for the future of so many families out there right now that are relying on you know four million different personalities out there who came together with an idea and are now in this fight and uh, it's getting heated up right now uh, i think friday says a lot about where the stock is at where the sentiment is at and i can tell but just by everyone's comments and things i've seen written places that the sentiment is still there people are buying and holding and i'm hoping it does come down a little more because i'd honestly like to hop back in with all this overtime that i have and try to get some shares down below forty dollars because if i if i can i'm going to all right guys so that's all i've got for tonight i'm gonna let you guys go with saturday night i'll be up with that video tomorrow night and to everyone out there who's a new subscriber or viewers or you know commented guys thank you very much for keeping um me engaged and keeping me coming down and getting the information to you guys and trying to find these points that I think are really important to keep us motivated and keep your head in the game. And I think it will pay off in the long run. So I hope everybody's doing really well. I will be down to answer those comments tomorrow. You have my word. I will have that video out tomorrow night. And I think you guys will find it interesting. Uh, at least I hope so. This is Ape Nation. I'm the Mastalorian, and I'm out.